So we're going to start with a starting point. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. There's plenty of articles and tutorials out there on how to create maps. The book that I recommend for this class has a way to do it too. Not as full featured as I'm going to talk about here, however. And so you can reinvent the wheel every time you want. Great. But if you have a starting point, you'll be able to get your work completed faster. So I'm giving us a starting point. We're going to dissect what's here. We're going to then still have to change it for our purposes and get it to work with our project. So it's not that I'm just giving you this and we're done. We still have to work on it. First thing is make sure, it doesn't matter, but make sure you change your name to DIR. Change the file to DIR because if, we, if we're going to connect from this file to that file, we need to reference its name. And if you keep it as DIR start, make sure your code connects to DIR start. Once you've got that DIR file, that directions file, let's open it in Notepad. Right-click Edit with Notepad++. Plus plus. And we've got here 118 lines of code. So this is the easy way or the hard way. This is the hard way or the less hard way. Do you want to write 118 lines of code just for the map? No one raised their hands. So good. We'll use the less hard way. That means it's still going to require some effort, but we don't have to write 118 lines. Um, let's uh, load it up in Notepad and then open it up in Firefox just to see what it looks like, and then we'll talk about what's what we've got. Go ahead and open it up in Notepad, or in uh, Firefox. What should happen is, it might take a little moment, but then eventually it should pop up that asks you, this is asking for your location, share it or not. I'm going to let it. Sh I'm going to share it, and because perhaps our computers don't have the best GPS, they have no GPS. You get some sort of generic starting location. If you're on your laptop, you might get a better result because Wi-Fi usually does work better. And we've got this top directions text and this sort of picture here, but it's not a picture. It's a live map. I can click to zoom in and double click and zoom out and I can drop a Google Street View little guy here and, and see for real what's happening at the corner of Hawthorne. And I can click get directions and it'll take my starting point of um, starting point A and it'll give me starting point B, I mean ending point B, which goes over to some place which is 4343 Ocean View Boulevard. This is real map. You can even click on the first instruction and it pops up here. Head north on Front Street toward West Hawthorne. So it's not going to be turn by turn in that it talks to you while you're driving, but these are the directions to go and it's interactive and and all of that, and that will work on our mobile device. So you might say, okay, it's over then. You gave us the, the thing, let's go home, we're done. No, let's see what we've got, because there's still a lot to, to work with this. First of all, it's going to a location. Why is it going to that location on B? I want it to go to my business on Main Street. We'll see how to do that. Second, well, it's not integrated into my project yet, because from the home button I have map but it doesn't go there we need to fix that the design of it is not the same the design of our current project is this is this sleek gray where the where this one is the wrong design and maybe I want to fix other things about it the particular text and icons and all of that so that's what we're gonna work on let's go back to the notepad file and before we delve into the code let's go all the way to the very last line Line 117 has a link, a comment, a comment which is a link to the article where this came from. So a few years ago when I was developing this class and I wanted to add a map feature to the project, I had to do my research. I had to see what's the best way to teach this. And honestly, there's no easy way to teach this. This is kind of advanced to make a map, especially an interactive map. But I found a great uh, a great answer at stackoverflow.com. If you've never heard of stackoverflow.com, it's an amazing website where people ask questions on a variety of code and technology and people answer. 
you might say, well, if anyone can answer, people will answer crazy things. Sure, but there's thumbs up and thumbs down. So the, th the bad answers will get voted down and the good answers will get voted up, in theory. And usually that's the case. The best answers are usually at the top. So I, I looked up how to, how to make an easy map example, or whatever my search term was. And eventually I got clean example of directions with Google Maps in jQuery Mobile. And the, that link is still active and you can go read up on it and probably there's a new version of, of the answer. But everything that's coming from here came, I mean everything that I've given you here comes from that answer and it's been tweaked for this class and we're going to tweak it some more. So that's how you further your projects, that's how you, you learn more, you look it up because I might give you a 500 page book but that's not going to give you every answer. You might take a three month long course, that's not going to give you every answer. This stuff is always changing and evolving. So I'm working on my own apps on the side for fun and I don't have every answer that I need from my materials, I have to go look it up and I find my answers. And so with this then, let's see what, it, what did we get. Let's start from the bottom and we'll go up. Way down at, at nearly line 100, it doesn't really actually start the visual part of the project. The body doesn't start until line 97. And on line 98, we've got a div data role page ID map. That seems familiar except that it's using divs instead of sections because it's a data role page. We'll fix that in a moment. And we've got div data role header with a <coughs> heading there, h1. That's going to need to be fixed, div. We've got div data role content. Well, it's using the old version of jQuery Mobile. We don't use data role content anymore. We use role equals main and class equals ui dash content plus we need the appropriate article. So we'll fix that in a moment. Then we've got some more divs. I'm not saying that divs, we never use divs. We've used divs as appropriate. But here is another example. We've got div, something called class UI bar, UI corner all, UI shadow. That must, that sounds like it's some jQuery mobile stuff doing something. UI bar A give me corners on all corners or something and a shadow. So even if I don't know exactly what that means, that should sound familiar in the terms of jQuery mobile that we've already seen, UI dash something. We've got a little bit of, what is this actually here? CSS. Inline CSS, which is not the best. It means that this style is only applying to this one part in my whole project. But that can be changed if we want. A little bit of padding. That's what's causing this padding right here, 1.25 M's. I don't think we talked about M's too much. We've mentioned pixels maybe and percentages, but M's are related to percentages. So think about it as one, think about it as 125 percent. 1 1.25 M's is like 125 percent. So it's giving us 125 percent of space of that element, which still might not quite make sense, but it's basically a unit of measurement based on the letter M of your font. So 125% of the size of the letter M of my font is the size that I have of padding around the map. Is it better to use that with the responsive design rather than pixels? It is actually. So pixels give us a fixed value that doesn't change, and therefore when we have different sized monitors, it doesn't change. But if you use percentages or M's, that's better because they grow and shrink depending on the monitor. Next line is we've got another div and this has got an ID of canvas underscore map. We'll see later, well, okay, why is that named uniquely as an ID? A little more inline CSS. The height of the map, 350. So if we want a taller map, we can change that. A, uh, a shorter map, we can change that. And right now it's hard-coded to pixels, so it'll always be 350 tall. We could use percent there to grow and shrink depending on the monitor's size. And that div, actually, if you notice, the div starts and the div ends, and there's nothing between the div. That's very common to see. But we've got like a placeholder div that will do more than what it starts off as usually through JavaScript. 
JavaScript will allow us to manipulate just about anything on our page. Because right now, technically here, there's no map on screen until JavaScript somehow makes the map appear in this placeholder. Another div called with a data role of field contain, and for myself, honestly, I've got to look that one up. I don't remember exactly what that one does, but it's related to a form where you input where you input something like a name or an address or something. So it relates to that forms. We've got label and input. So input here, type text. We'll we'll look at input forms more complexly later, but an input form is like when you log into something, username and password. That's those are inputs. So this is an input that accepts text, it has a name, it has an ID, and it has a value. Well, value, that's an address. This is the line where we would change the target destination. So if I wanted my company's location, if I want this map when I eventually make it for my company, that's where I would change it so that the person starts off wherever they are in San Diego or the US or Europe or whatever and they end up in my location I just need to change this value and notice it's like a real address I can type here a real address why don't we try this type your home address this is not my home address but I'm gonna type an address change that value and reload it get directions and it's going to go to where we tell it. Southwestern College. So this is what I'm saying about a starting point. We have this and we can change it and many other aspects for our purposes. And then it says style display none. If we change let me back up a moment. Line 107, label, target destination. There's some text that says target destination, but it's not visible on screen. Neither is this input box for a destination, because they both have some inline CSS that says display none. Hide this from the user. It still does something, but just don't show it. For fun, let's make it visible. We've got a CSS property display none we've also got display block some of these don't make sense but trust me change this to block display block on line 107 and also on line 108 display colon block see what happens if I change those to display block Look at that. There's an input field that is user editable. And it works. Get directions and you get new directions. Not necessary for this app, right? Because I want people to come to my to my uh, to my store if they wanted you know to go from their house to Trader Joe's well why would they come to my app where they can plug in Trader Joe's address they'd go over to Google or Bing or whatever so that's why it's it's hidden display none hides the user editable input boxes because we want people to always end up at a certain destination so I'm going to put those two back. It doesn't make sense that the user can choose an ending destination in my app. Um, you, yes? Um, I can't type in the address, but, I, but when I click on get directions, then it will show me a direction from my house. You know, the address I was putting in the value. And that's what it's going to take. Like, get direction. So you're saying that you're trying to click on this and it doesn't let you change it? Um, I don't see the button that button at all. I, I, I don't have that button at the top one. This
this is not about you're saying this this input box you don't see it because you didn't you didn't change the style display to block it's on 107 and 108 on the next line 110 then if you read through if you read through that you eventually see data roll button data inline true data icon arrow right get directions and then we've got an ID also directions dash button href pound it doesn't go anywhere but the button causes a map directions to appear so sometimes we see that we want a button to do something besides opening a website let's say or a web page or another screen of our app so we can put in a temporary placeholder dummy link it'll behave like a link but it won't go anywhere remember that as soon as we load the project the web browser or the mobile device will read all the code from top to bottom and execute every line it'll run every line so eventually it gets through all of this code and it comes down here to these lines div id results display none so there's a placeholder here also to display all directions but as soon as the project loads it hides it display none <coughs> somehow then it must be display at some point and then one more placeholder for the actual directions I sort of think that might be a little redundant, but it works. So all of that is just the, the visual part of the project as soon as, as, soon as someone um, loads this page, this screen. This is going to this is going to take us this app is supposed to bring us here to this campus so I'm just gonna pull up this campus's address I don't have it memorized so I'll just take it from the website so you can put whatever address you want on line 108 but I'm gonna add the college's address which is 8, uh, 8355 Arrow Drive, San Diego, California, 92123. Okay, so HTML is our is our foundation, our, our structural layer. CSS is our presentation layer, and JavaScript then is our behavior layer, our interaction. So something's going on with JavaScript that causes it to actually do something through user input. That's the lines 10 all the way down to uh, uh, 94. So about 84 lines of code that actually make it work. I'm not going to explain every single line, but I'm going to jump to the important ones. If we look at... Let's start like this. Uh, line... Um, okay, line 85. There's some jQuery happening here, and I can tell it's jQuery because I've got the dollar symbol shorthand. That means jQuery dollar symbol document. Previously we've seen something like that when we wanted to click a button. But now this is sort of saying, uh, let's pay attention to the whole document. Once the document becomes live, once it's loaded, but before it shows everything on the page, we run this JavaScript navigator dot geolocation dot get current position so that is some HTML5 JavaScript uh, modern stuff that lets the web page ask for uh, GPS coordinates and that can either have a success or an error 
So if we have a success, double click on the word loc success, location success, double click on it just to highlight it. Back up on your code while it's still highlighted, and where else does loc success highlight? Remember, when you highlight something in Notepad, it'll show you everywhere in your code it's highlighted. This is one way to figure out the spaghetti code, because something can go here and go here and link to here and here and here. So if you highlight something, it'll highlight throughout your code. Loc success. We need to back up to line 48. So loc success is defined is a function that we define here, or the developer invented loc success. Loc success captures a position. When we did that navigator dot uh, get uh, coordinates thing, it captured a latitude and longitude as well as other things like even your altitude and your speed and direction, all of this cool stuff. It captured that and used it in a function called initialize. It used initialize specifically the latitude and the longitude coordinates. Well, initialize, if you, if you double click that and back up elsewhere, you'll see that initialize is invented right here, function initialize. It accepts a latitude and a longitude value. And furthermore, it does things with that latitude and longitude. In short, it creates a map with a certain zoom level. I think there's, it goes from 0 to 20, maybe? So it has a certain zoom. We can play with that. But what if we put zoom 10? What about if we put zoom 2? Those are the, some of the things we can customize. It creates a map, specifically a road map. This is something that we would need to look up on the official Google documentation, because we have road maps, satellite maps, bus maps. We have a different kinds of maps to display. I don't have them all memorized, but I know that road map is the current one we have, and it works. Other stuff happens to then display uh, a little marker on your current position. It's supposed to say you are here, but I didn't see it on screen for some reason. Um, info window. So again, I'm not going to explain every single line of this, but it's asking for a location. It's doing something with that location. It's creating a map and putting it on screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. So it is doing it. I was clicking on it and then it didn't do it. It said current position, which is elsewhere in our code. But yeah, hover your mouse over and it says you are here. So if we don't want it to say you are here, we can obviously change that line. If you do click on the marker, it should show you, it should say current position, latitude, and actual coordinates. And if you look at, if you browse through your code, line 38, line 38 is where it says info window set content current position. Even if I don't know what info window and set current set content, if you browse the code, you should see parts that perhaps make sense, especially parts that are in quotes which often means that's something that I can edit that will display on screen, a string. So I'm seeing here, current position, latitude, longitude. And the actual string, or the actual coordinates uh, are stored in that variable, lat and lon. And where does that come from? Well, we just follow the spaghetti code back. Well, it came from here. It came from the initialization. And that originally came from simply asking for the coordinates. When the whole page loaded up, there was a location success. So if it sounds complicated, imagine writing this all ourselves. It works, and we can change it. And if we understand a bit of it, we can make, change it some more, such as this. We try to get the current position, and there's either going to be a success or a failure. Location success, location failure. Well, if we back up, we'll see that we've got a location, a loc error, 
that initializes it to a static predefined latitude and longitude, which should be somewhere in San Diego. So if you don't have a proper GPS lock, at least start give us a starting point from somewhere in San Diego. Because if we had no location starting point at all, then that would be even worse to get directions. So if I wanted it to start somewhere else, maybe Los Angeles, I'd have to look up the coordinates for Los Angeles, plug it in here, and then in theory, if, I, if GPS is not working, at least I'll get directions from Los Angeles to my ending point. <clears throat> And uh, if we go back down, so we've got, we've got this event handler. We've got something happening when a page, before the page shows, that's an event, and this handles it, an event handler. We've got over here some other event and a handler when there's a click. So all of this, in short, is saying on click. When there's a click on anywhere on the document, but specifically, the directions button. If you scroll down, we've got a href id directions button. When you click on this button, get directions, that triggers this. There's been a click on the document specifically on that directions button. When there's a click, do something called prevent default, don't worry about that yet, but more importantly, run a function called calculate route. Calculate route does not exist in jQuery or jQuery mobile or any of that. It exists because we created it, or the developer created it, right here. Function calculate route. And a bunch of voodoo happens here to take your starting point, your ending point, connecting with Google Maps live on the server, doing some math and checking locations and all of this stuff, and then eventually displaying a map displaying an updated map and the directions and that list of step-by-step -step directions. So again, I don't have to explain every line of it, it, but it works. It takes, it displays all of that. We didn't have to write the code to do this. Google did it for us and they just said, here, here's the code, use it yourself. Update it yourself. Results.show there's that results placeholder that is hidden when the page loads up. Well, we need it eventually, so results.show. Or else if we don't need it, hide it. There's an if-else statement happening here. We'll talk more about if-else statements. If something is true, do this. If something is false, do that. If-else. And what's happening on line 66 to 71? It's a comment. It's deactivated. Well, what if we reactivate it? What happens? It's going to be part of the code. But what? But what happens? Let's deactivate it. What happens? Alert pops up. It's giving you a more turn-by-turn -turn directions. Next, and next, and next. Kind of looks ugly, but it's giving me turn-by-turn -turn directions. So, if I did want pop-up turn-by-turn -turn directions, something here is, is allowing that to, to do that. An alert box, look at that. It pops up to show me step one, step two, step three of the instructions. All the way to the end, all the way to the full length, the, until the end of the route. Maybe I can play with that later. I think it's obtrusive at the moment, so I'm going to deactivate it. But this is this is our turn-by-turn -turn map feature. Can you just click on like uh, two random points, like for example, you want to go from like any anywhere in like PD to mm -hmm. uh, like Quailoma? Sure. Not with our code as is. It, it's not programmed for that. See, I can't do that. You know, if I right click, nothing happens. So, this particular code doesn't allow for that. But we can look up on the Google Maps documentation how to do that. It, it can get pretty complex. We won't really need it for this app because it wants 
to give a person, where are you at? Come to our college. But if we wanted on your app to be able to do that, we could. We just have to look it up and integrate it into our project. So that's the JavaScript, and it works. And we can edit things here and there to customize it a bit more. But oftentimes, this is what you get. You look up a question, how to do this on JavaScript, people will give you the answer. That doesn't mean it works perfectly for your case. You still have to customize. And then some variables are created at the very top here. A map variable, current position, dis directions display, direction service. And they're used throughout the project. Again, we don't need to see exactly how they work, but that script starts on line 10 and goes on for 80 lines. Before that, we've got scripts that we're referencing. jQuery, jQuery mobile, and something on Google's map servers. And then before that, a jQuery mobile CSS file. And notice that's jQuery 1.3, jQuery mobile 1.3, and jQuery 1.7, so those are things we should fix as well. And then title and meta and so forth. So we're going to fix those right now, but any general questions? Yeah. So a lot of the jQuery stuff we're not but we could because we've got a lot to do still mm -hmm. but we could <clears throat> upgrade that to to jQuery here and there mm -hmm. it works as is so I can live with it but if I was really OCD, I would want to go in and make sure it's all the newest, best, most updated work. But that'll be for version 2. Yes? Are there rules about borrowing code? I mean, a lot of people make their code open source, but then there's other people who don't. And obviously, Google Maps does. So is there a possibility of getting in trouble? There is, but you have to see where you're getting the code from. If I simply o open Walmart's website and view source, and I find something and then borrow it there, that could be problematic. But if I go to a, uh, a source like Stack Overflow where people are giving away their code, no problem. So you just have to know where are you getting it from and what, how are they allowing you to use it and, and all of that. So I know on my apps, if I go look up how to do something like I did something for uh, presenting um, presenting uh, uh, dollar you know uh, quantities of money I wanted it to display it in a very specific way I looked it up someone gave away their code but I still in my comment added the uh, the originator of it and then furthermore I could go to my about screen where it's got the list of all of the um, licenses and such, and I could give them a credit also. So oftentimes, if you give a credit, you'll be fine. And of course, go to locations, go to websites where they're giving this code away, hopefully, where you won't have any trouble. Um, could you push mm -hmm. it with the links, um, the jQuery links on the top? Yes. Like, um, say, you know, I, you know, I'd like to have my own website and I, you know, Go and put a JQuery model like the one that you asked me last week, mm -hmm. and then uh, copy the thing and put in the local. Um, sh should I do the same thing with this uh, application, with the, with the map application? Would it, would it be better? It would be better. It would be better to have local versions, and that's what we're going to do, except for one of, for two of them, because of issues. So let's let's fix this, actually. Let's go back to line 6. We have a copy of the latest jQuery right on our project. So let's fix line 6 so that it simply points to jQuery mobile 145. We'll skip line 7 for the moment and go to line 8 and do the same thing. Go to line 8 and just cut that down to be jQuery mobile 145.min.js. Save it and run it. I just want to make sure I didn't break anything. And what should happen is that now this project looks like my 
main project. It doesn't have that old school black bar. It's got the newer, cleaner gray bar. It should still behave as before. It shouldn't suddenly break. Check your code. Make sure you didn't delete too much. We're just doing href jQuery mobile and source jQuery mobile 145. Take out the whole HTTP stuff. On line seven, so I've taught this class for a few years, and we've been upgrading our code throughout the years. Right now we're using two point whatever, but we will not uh, actually use the latest jQuery. Because at a certain point, this version of the Google Maps, which I guess is version three, doesn't work anymore with jQuery version 2x, which is what we have. So this Google code is reliant on this version of jQuery, so we're going to leave those two alone. And yes, they do both point to online resources. And we did talk about, well, what if the internet goes down? What if I don't have access? Well, what good is a map going to do you anyway when you don't have internet access? So that's kind of moot. I will leave those two active, I mean the same, and they do rely on an active internet connection, but so does my whole map thing here. So we would have to deal with it in other ways that we can talk about later. If there's no map feature at all, well, don't even display the ability to do maps because the, the app can't do it. No, there's no GPS. So I'm going to leave both of those lines here, the jQuery 1.7 and the Google Map version 3. Leave those alone. I'm going to test my project, make sure it still works like I expect. It's still asking for a location. Great. Now it's got the brand new modern gray. Notice also one subtle thing. The get directions icon, arrow right, looked like that in the old code. And now arrow right looks like that. But actually, I don't want that. I want it a different icon. I want that navigation icon. So let's go down to line 110, data icon arrow R. Now we'll do data icon navigation. There we go, that, we get that little icon there, that looks nice. It's in my gray style, good. We're getting the air. We're getting it down there, that little red dot is pointing at the address that's in there, the longitude and latitude of the air. Did you change the address to the other person? So this value, you're saying if you change this address? Well, you change that address, right? Yes. But where, where it comes up with that little red thing mm -hmm. is up where the error routine is. If <coughs> it, it was an error, it put that fixed longitude and latitude in. Yes, exactly. This this is being put for on our. For some reason, we're getting that error, right? Yes, because these these uh, these computers don't have accurate GPS. Oh, so so it's just default. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It needs to start somewhere, so it starts it somewhere. Uh, if we did check this out on a real device that had GPS, then it would give you the accurate starting point, definitely. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, what we've done there, and actually uh, we're going to run out of time, so I'm not going to do it here, but you should at some point update these divs, right? Div data roll page, that should be section. 
the data row header should be header. I'm not going to do it. You should be able to do it on your own. I'm going to add it to my code at the end of the day, but I want to look at other things. I want to integrate this into my project, so I'm going to move on. This dir file exists separately from my project, and if I wanted to, I could put this project into my index file. But I'm just going to show you that we can do it those different ways. We can have everything of our whole project in one file, like an SPA, single page app, or we can have separate things on separate HTML files. That's perfectly fine. But we have to remember to add the, that extra attribute. So we'll do it again to remind us. I've got index HTML and dir HTML. Switch to your index HTML. And we've got that button on line 245 that is supposed to load the direction screen. Right, 245. So now we'll fill in our proper href here, and also that one little extra attribute that will make it work when you go from one file to another. So line 245, we're going to reference the dirhtml file. We're going to go from this file to another another file. And then we need, after href, anywhere really, but we need rel, the relationship between that file and this file, is that it is external. We saw that before when we linked over to the college's website, remember? So now that's all we need here. Save it and run it. Save and run your index file. You should be able to click on that button and it will open the direction screen and it'll look like it's part of the project because we've upgraded to this jQuery Mobile 145. Remember to spell all of this right, of course, dir.html. If your directions file is still called dir-start, that's your problem. Either rename your file dir or change your link to dir start. Let's see. Save. Make sure you save both index and index and dir. Run your index. Go to about. Click on map. And it loads it up. Is the share location mandatory for privacy purposes, or is just convenient? The web browsers, um, I, don't, I don't remember if it's built into the standard or the web browser, but somewhere along the lines one of them said we need to ask permission. And on mobile, I know it asks for permission, and it also <laughs> says don't ask anymore, and it'll just keep working. I didn't see that here. But when eventually, when we get this into our app, we will not get that pop-up. We have the ability, when we make it an app, to make that auto-accepting. So it doesn't keep asking for that location. It just doesn't. So it opened directions, but we've got a problem. How do I get back to my app? Imagine you don't have that back button on your web browser. There's no way to get back to the app. We've got the back button here, but we won't have a back button in, our, in the app, let's say. We should be able to click some button to go back to the main app. So let's add a back button from the dir file back to the index file. So let's go to the dir file. Line 99. We're going to add a button in the header before directions. So give yourself a new line 100, and we'll um, write back. That'll be a link. href. We don't know where it's going to go just yet. I'll explain why in a moment. So 
So the cool thing is, that's all we need for it to behave like a button. We don't need the data roll button here. So whenever you have a link in a header, in a foot or two, I believe, it will automatically act like a button because that's usually what you're going to see in a header, either text or a button. So we won't need to add data role button, but maybe I do want an icon. Data dash icon, and we can do uh, arrow dash L. That's an L, not a number one. Arrow left. So here we we could pretty easily think to fill that in. So if anyone has an opinion, what should our href actually be here? Home? Raise your hand if you think it should be home. Back it out. That could work. But wait a minute. That means go to the about screen, and this assumes in the dir file. We need to be in the index file. Um, so all along, this worked just fine because we had an SPA, a single page app. So we had the about section and the uh, PC section and the advanced computer section and all that because it was in this one file. Now we've got two files, so we want to go to a specific place on a different file. Unfortunately, it will not work to do this. This is what we would normally do in the old days before jQuery Mobile. This doesn't work. jQuery Mobile doesn't understand this, even though this would make perfect sense. So, we will not we will actually not be able to target a specific uh, pound sign in a specific file. The best that we could do is to take us back to index. That'll take us back to the back to the root, back to the home. That's annoying. So actually, we won't do any of that because what if we were getting to the map from the PC screen or from the about screen? or from the art screen. Well, we can't exactly make it... we can't hard code it to go back to any one of those possibilities. So we'll actually use a little JavaScript to take advantage of the history that is inherent in the web browser and when it's an app. There's a history that's being made. You're on the home screen, you've moved to the about screen, you've moved to the DIR screen. So okay, great, take us back one point in history. Because what if I went from the home page to the PC page and then the DIR page? Well, then one page back in history would take us back to the PC page. So we're going to write a little bit of JavaScript here. And close your eyes while I look it up because I forgot what it is. Ah, uh, yes, okay. So what we're going to do is a little bit of JavaScript, in the inline JavaScript. So we'll do uh, on click equals. We saw this before. And so um, this will apply just only to this button throughout my whole app. But it's such a quick, uh, quick solution that I'm fine with it here. If I was going to redo this many more times elsewhere, I might find a more universal jQuery way to do it, perhaps. But um, we're going to say, when you click this button, run this JavaScript, which is uh, history.back, open close parentheses. 
we have the history object. Remember the, the terminology when we talked about objects and methods? We had console.log. The console is the object. We're using the method log to write something to the console. Here we've got an object of history. It's keeping track of everywhere you've gone. And so then let's say, let's go back one space in history. So that should be enough. Um, let's go ahead and save it. Don't run it from your index file. Run, I mean, don't run it from your DIR file. Run it from your index file. Because if you run it from your DIR file, you have no history to go back to. So make sure DIR is saved and index is saved. And from the index, navigate, go to the DIR file, and then try the back button and see if it takes you back one point in history. Question? Yeah, um, the only thing that we added only on click right because I was kind of doing kind of so we uh, only added on click right. <laughs> Th That's right. We've only this is the only thing we've added to this button. It's the only thing I've written so far. Just on click, just click right back. All right. So watch this. I'm gonna go to my index file and run my index file, and then I'm gonna go to about map and back. If you opened your DIR file directly, there is no history to go back to, so it won't work. So that should work, hopefully. I'm going to then back. It takes me back. It took me back to the about page. One history state back. So that's a better solution. Yes? On a mobile device, is there a back button that you have in your browser screen? Depends on your device. Uh, so on my phone, I do have a back button. <coughs> you don't know, however, if the back button is going to override the behavior that you're expecting. The back button might exit me from my app completely. So it depends on your device. So that's why we don't want to rely on these buttons sometimes. We want to make sure we've got a proper navigation in the app itself. Okay. All right, so that work for everyone? Okay, let's take our last break, and actually we're going to run through the end of the time. We will have a little bit of lab time, but I do want to cover one more thing. We'll take a short break, just eight minutes, come back at 8.50, and we'll look at the last thing to make this customization work. We should be able to do it. Take a short eight-minute break, seven minutes now, come back at 8.50, and we'll get this working.